an application scientist here at Nanoscience Instruments. Welcome back to our video series on electrospinning. In our last video, we talked about what is electrospinning and how it's used in the world around us. Today, we're looking a little deeper into the fascinating world of electrospinning and how to make those super fine nanofiber structures. If you've ever wondered how to fabricate these tiny marbles, you're in the right place. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing you'll need is an electrospinning setup. This may sound complex, but trust me, it's not as difficult as it seems. First, you'll need a high voltage power supply. This is the heart of the operation. It generates high voltage needed for electrospinning. Next, a syringe pump or other solution supply is necessary to control the rate of flow of your polymer solution. Then we need a spinneret or a needle. This is where the magic happens, and your polymer solution is electrically charged and ejected. Finally, we need a collector to complete our configuration. This is the grounded or negatively charged surface where the nanofibers will be deposited. Here we have the LE100 biotubing electrospinning system from Fluidnatech. In this setup, we have a syringe pump system to control the flow of the polymer solution, but other setups may have options like pressure vessels, peristaltic pumps, or reservoirs. Here, we have a needle connected to our voltage supply and the syringe pump solution feeding using a metal adapter and non-conductive tubing setup. In this setup, a 10 centimeter diameter rotating drum made of anodized aluminum is used as the collector. On the surface of the collector, we have attached an optional substrate on which the fibers will be collected and easily removed. Once you have your setup assembled and ready, here's a basic five-step guide to begin electrospinning. Step one, prepare your solution. Start by preparing your polymer solution. This is usually a blend of a polymer and solvent, but it can be made from many materials. There are a few crucial factors, such as the viscosity and conductivity of the solution that should be just right for electrospinning. We will discuss the details of solution preparation in an upcoming video. Step two, load the syringe. Once prepared, carefully load your solution into a syringe that can be attached to the syringe pump. Make sure there are no air bubbles, as bubbles can act as insulators in your setup and negatively affect your electrospinning. You can then mount the syringe into the syringe pump. Step three, set the parameters. Adjust the flow rate, needle to collector distance, and voltage on your high power voltage supply. This can be done using the touch screen on the Fluidatech systems. These parameters will have to be optimized for each instrument, the material you are electrospinning, and the desired nanofiber properties. It's also good to note that many additional parameters must also be optimized to achieve desirable results. Step four, once everything is set up, Activate the setup, including the syringe pump, collectors, and any other accessories, and allow them to stabilize for a few moments. Once stabilized, turn on your high voltage power supply. The polymer solution will be distorted into a cone shape at the tip of the needle before ejecting as a fine electrified jet. This cone shape is known as the Taylor cone, and it is highly characteristic of the electrospinning process. It can tell you a lot about the quality of your electrospinning, including your solution and what parameters you may need to change during your process. Be sure to watch our next video on the importance of the Taylor cone for more information on this. Going back to our current setup, the electric field between the spinneret and the collector causes the jet to elongate into an ultra-thin nanofiber before depositing on the collector surface. It's truly mesmerizing to watch these nanofibers take shape right before your eyes. This brings us to step five, collecting and removing the nanofibers. As the nanofibers are spun, they'll be deposited on the collector surface. This could be a rotating drum, as we see in this case, a stationary flat plate, or any other surface suitable for your project. Choosing the right collector makes a big difference in your fiber outcomes, so be sure to be on the lookout for our future videos on collector types too. And there you have it, folks. You've successfully electrospun some nanofibers. Keep in mind that there are many variables you can adjust to achieve different results. The choice of polymer, solvent, voltage, flow rate, and many other factors all impact the resulting nanofiber structure. And that's a wrap on our quick guide to electrospinning. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you're diving into the world of nanofibers, remember to experiment, be patient, and have fun with it. In the next video, we'll be discussing the importance of the Taylor cone, 
So don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with more exciting content from Nanoscience Instruments. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay curious.